Good morning everyone, Dr. Fedi here. While everyone is super excited about Brizola and GT20029 and the prospect of them being released in 2026, which I don't think is gonna happen, there's one hair loss product that I think has the most potential in terms of being considered a hair loss cure, but also being released in 2026 for commercial use. And of course, I'm talking about Vertoporfen, the only compound that we have currently that is capable of turning a Norwood 7 into a Norwood 1. And just before I forget, one quick reminder, I resumed my meeting service when you can book a meeting with me and we can craft a personalized hair loss management strategy for you. I've been dealing with this for many, many years right now and I've been successful, at least partially, in retaining what I have on the top of my head. And I'm also a medical doctor, so I can help guide you through this process of androgenetic alopecia and guarantee if you follow this process for 99% of you guys that you will keep the majority of your hair to a sufficient amount until at least you're 70 years old. And the good thing about this particular product is that it's already FDA approved. It's been widely used in ophthalmology, eye medicine, for a condition called age-related macular degeneration where a certain area of the retina in the eye, the inside part of the eye, responsible for photo reflection and processing, that particular area goes through the process of degeneration and vertoporfin comes in this particular condition because it prevents the formation of scar tissue and so that degeneration doesn't happen and by that mechanism it treats that condition or at least slows it down by the same process vertoporfin has been proposed by so many people including me back in 2022 to be studied for the prevention of scar tissue formation after doing a hair transplant so when you harvest hair from the back of the head the reason why we have limited donor area is because when we harvest hairs from the back of the head during the procedure the process of harvesting is so damaging to the skin in that area so that it creates a scar tissue so certain pathways activate underneath the skin including the yap pathway, one of the pathways responsible for the scar tissue formation and the transformation of healthy skin into scar tissue. And once that pathway gets activated, the skin is not going to be regenerated into a normal skin, but it's going to be transformed into scar tissue. And there is nothing wrong with that, but two particular aspects, scar tissue differs from normal skin tissue by three characteristics. First of all, it lacks the elasticity that normal skin has. Second of all, it doesn't have the same blood supply as the normal skin. And third of all, is characterized by the absence of hair follicles. And I'm gonna show you one thing. I had done a surgery on my knee a couple years back and I have this, I don't know if you see it, I'm gonna try to zoom out. I have this scar here from the surgery. And you can see I have a very hairy leg over here, but this particular area where I have the scar doesn't really have any hair follicles. Again, I'm gonna try to zoom in in the editing, but if you can look carefully, I don't have any hairs coming out of that scar tissue, but I have hairs surrounding that area. And the reason why I did that little demonstration there is because I wanted to emphasize how different scar tissue is from normal tissue. Scar tissue doesn't have any hair follicles, right? And when we harvest hairs from the back of the head, we transform that normal skin of the scalp on the back of the head into a scar tissue that lacks hair follicles. And thus, the big problem with hair transplants and with treating hair loss in advanced stages especially when it begins in an early age is that we have a limited donor hair right and we can't do infinite hair transplants and so we we can't really treat someone's hair loss if he has a very advanced pattern and most of the time he he won't he won't be able to do a hair transplant and if he finds a surgeon who accepts to do a hair transplant for him, it won't be really a, a very good one. And so in theory, if we could prevent this process of turning normal skin into a scar tissue skin on the back of the head after doing a hair transplant procedure, we could turn any Norwood 7 Plus patient into a Norwood 1. We can literally 
reconstruct his hairline into his teenage hairline we could recreate the density that he had in his adolescence and we could do everything that he wants to do with his hair this is the biggest limitation when it comes to treating hair loss in my opinion non-pharmacological treatment of course we're talking about interventional kind of aspect of hair loss management but this is the biggest limitation if you have all the money in the world you cannot solve your hair loss if you have a very advanced stage of androgenetic alopecia for this one reason because you have a limited donor supply so vertoborphin has been proposed again by many people i was one of the people that talked about it a lot in the initial stages of discussion and there's this jordanian doctor who goes by the name dr barghuthi who was curious enough to start his micro study in his own practice in Jordan where he injected his own patients who went to his cabinet for a hair transplant surgery he injected them in their donor area with vertoporfin prior to them doing the hair transplant procedure or during the procedure he observed the evolution of their donor hair and he was basically looking for any signs that vertoporfin would do its magic in the donor area and recreate healthy skin in the areas where he harvested hair from the back of the head and injected vortoporfin and he found some very good data i'm going to show you some slides over here that prompted other hair transplant surgeons to do the same micro study in their own practice one of those doctors is dr bloxham a hair transplant surgeon based in new york where he did his own study the results are mixed up from these micro studies that we have and the only problem with that is that we don't really have a large study we don't have a large study for vertoporfin assessing the prevention of scar tissue formation in hair transplants of course we do have plenty of data for the work and mechanism and efficacy of vertoporfin when it comes to age related macular degeneration and ophthalmology but we don't have any for hair loss and so that's one problem that's going on and i hope that gets solved and prompts some organization to make a study evaluating the efficacy of vertoporfin in this particular case for hair loss sufferers but in the meantime the good news is again this product is fda approved already for this condition in ophthalmology so you don't have any problem outsourcing the product if you want to try it yourself and there are plenty of hair transplant surgeons currently as we speak that offer this service when you do a hair transplant surgery they offer you some injections of vertoporfin in your donor area just in case it restores some of the donor supply you're gonna harvest and implant in the front of your head and the bonus of good news regarding vertoporfin is that it doesn't really have any side effects so this is not a pharmacological treatment that you need to consistently take on a regular basis every day this is a one-time thing that you do during your hair transplant procedure and so it, it doesn't really have the potential of creating side effects like the sexual side effects that we see with 5-alpha reductase inhibitors like finasteride and dutasteride which I made a video about recently that you can watch over here. One other plus or quality if you'd say about vertoporfin is that it's insanely cheap. One ampoule Ampool of vertoporfin costs around $28. It's becoming harder and harder to source the product because there's much demand for it. But once the supply catches up, it's gonna be super cheap. It's not expensive to fabricate or manufacture. And so this is one plus. It won't cost you a ton of money if you're gonna inject yourself with vertoporfin while you're doing your hair transplant procedure. And there are plenty of hair transplant surgeons that offer this service and even the hair transplant surgeons who don't offer this service if you suggest it to them I don't really see why they would reject your offer and so I recently watched a video of hair cafe Kevin where he talked about the treatments that they were gonna be released in 2026 due to his opinion and I don't really agree with a lot of the compounds that he talked about like Brizula I don't think that Brizula is gonna be released in 2026 we still don't have the results of the phase 3 clinical trials the extended version the phase 3 clinical trials and even once we do we still have to go the comp or at least the company still has to, to go through the FDA process the FDA approval process for the new drug approval and that takes a lot of time at least one year to one year and a half so I don't think we're gonna have Brizula which is the compound that's 
closest to being approved. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get it approved in 2026. So there's a lot of time to wait. And so Vertoporfin is the only product that's probably going to be revolutionary in 2026 if we get more popularity. But a little disclosure, we still don't have the conclusive data to say for sure that Vertoporfin is 100% efficacious. From the pictures that we got from the micro studies of Dr. Bloxham and Dr. Barhuthi, we certainly see some efficacy, we certainly see some magic, but we can't really tell for sure until we have a large scale data, which to be honest, I don't think we're gonna get it because no organization is gonna be incentivized to do such research because there is no a financial incentive for any company to do that. This compound is already FDA approved and so hair transplant surgeons can outsource it themselves and apply it during their hair transplant procedures. So there is really not a financial incentive for any company to create such a large scale research study. So we have to deal with what we have currently and yeah, that's just something that I wanted to tell you before 2026. I'm gonna make one more video before the year ends and as I said I have a very pleasant surprise for you guys before the year ends and yeah that's it. If you have any topic that you want me to talk about make sure to post it here in the comments and that's it. Bye bye!